tell us your name, spell your name for us, and tell us where you're from and a little bit of your medical background. Sure. My name is Dwayne Campbell, D-U-A-N-E, Campbell like the soup, as I like to say. And I was actually born in Jamaica, and I came to New York when I was eight years old. And um, did most of my schooling in terms of undergrad at Yale and on the East Coast, and then I uh, decided to go to California and spent 10 years out there. And um, did my medical school, my fellowship, residency, everything in Stanford. Um, and came to Florida because uh, my parents are snowbirds. I'm the oldest kid, and uh, they're settling in the Orlando area in Fort Lauderdale. And I um, really wanted to be closer to them. Spending 10 years apart was a little rough when they started to get sicker and older. And so I'm happy to be in Florida. Is this the first uh, hospital you've worked in outside of your residency? Um, outside of all my training, residency, and fellowship, yes, this is the first hospital I've worked at um, outside of all that, yes. What drew you to this medical center? I thought it was a huge opportunity. The, the reality is that I was looking for two things. I was looking for a challenge. I was looking for a hospital with scale. Um, and I was also looking for the fact that I could slip into a position where I could really institute changes, um, and Lakeland met all those things. It's a huge hospital, and when you look at the amount of patients that come through here, there's a huge amount of need. It's really critical for Central Florida itself. And um, the ability to actually come in and be the medical director for the Stroke Center, that's a lot to ask for, and it's able to do a lot of things with a lot of supportive uh, management here at Lakeland. So. Tell us some uh, specifics of your role here, your responsibility, and uh, how that's played out, and maybe how long you've been here. Right. Yeah, so the Stroke Center is multidisciplinary. There's a lot of involvement with different people. There's the emergency room, there's radiology, there's the neurologist. And over time, we're actually trying to involve the neurosurgeons as well, especially as we get more academic neurosurgeons that do more advanced procedures here. Um, so it's changed and evolved because Lakeland's doing more and more things here than we were in the past with technology and advancements and investments. But my responsibility is to really try and coordinate all these different people that are all helpful with stroke because stroke is complicated. It involves cardiologists, neurosurgeons, heart doctors. You know, it involves a lot of different people. I try to figure out what are the things that we need to take better care of our patients in terms of diagnostic studies, in terms of treatment, in terms of medicines. We look at the data in terms of how our patients are doing. We try to make adjustments so that we can do things faster, better, and cheaper. Um, so essentially, while there are lots of people involved, nurse practitioners, administrators, uh, other physicians in other groups, my job is to really look at the data and try to figure out what direction do we need to go in so that we can do it better. As you look at the sweep of the need for someone that's had a stroke, right. it sounds like Lakeland is doing some things very, very well. What right. gaps do you see exist currently that might right. be filled Absolutely. There, I think, one of the big gaps is that um, when patients would come to Lakeland and they had a significant stroke, um, we would lose continuity of care in our medical system because they would have to go somewhere else, I, usually Winter Haven Hospital, uh, the rehab center over there. And now we have better continuity where these patients, well, we will have better continuity in 2015 when we open up our rehab center. These patients are going to be still within our healthcare system so that if they're not progressing the way they should or someone really has a deep question about what did this patient really look like, what were your expectations in terms of where they would be in a week or two weeks, the physicians that cared for them in the acute stroke phase are available easily to those patients and also available for the families as well because sometimes questions come up. Before, uh, what would happen is they got their acute care here and then they were gone. And um, we're really kind of closing the loophole and I think it'll be better for the patients. The reason why, is the way he's talking, it's like it's, it's already happened. Do we want to just have him say we look forward in the future? Sure. That we'll be able uh, to yeah. have these things. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's probably okay. a good idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I can rephrase that. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> okay. So if there were a rehabilitation hospital that built here, what benefit would that be to the patients who yeah. I think that a rehab center here would have tremendous benefits. Um, some of the things that we're looking forward to is to be able to have better continuity of care with our patients here. Um, uh, the way things currently work is that patients get great acute stroke care here and then they go somewhere else. And quite often the physicians at the rehab center where they go to may have questions where they would, have, would prefer to actually have contact with a neurologist that took care of the patient while they were quite ill in terms of what are the expectations in terms of how is this patient progressing, et cetera. Now they'll be able to do all this at LRMC. There'll be continuity in the, in the future where the patient 
we know exactly what we expect the patient to get better towards and we can help guide that. And if the patient starts going backwards, it wouldn't be a big deal for the patient to be readmitted back to our hospital so we can make adjustments as needed for that patient's care. And I think patients and their families are gonna appreciate it. Um, I bump into patients sometimes when I'm at the Publix grocery store and they tell me, hey, thanks a lot for taking care of me with my acute stroke. We really missed you as I was getting better in rehab. Uh, um, those things are not going to happen in the future when we have our rehab center here because the reality is that um, if the patients or the families have any questions, we're all available for them in the future. You talk about bumping into a patient in public. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious as to what sort of needs exist for people with stroke yeah. once they finish their rehabilitation. Right. Or it's going to rehab is the end of the story, but they're getting back into society. Right. Right. What, what do you see there? We have a stroke survivors group and it's really helpful. Um, our stroke coordinator helps run that and we, and as, as the physicians, we pop in every once in a while just to see how they're doing. Um, in terms of looking at the data for all of our patients, I think people would be really surprised. Um, the vast majority of our patients that get treated for acute stroke here at LRMC go home. And, or they either go home or go home with home health. So they actually do relatively well. Um, and that's why it's extremely important for patients to come in early so that we can give those patients things like IV TPA or open up their blood vessels through the VAS lab because earlier to come you come to any emergency room especially this emergency room is the faster we can give you treatments where you will actually have very few neurologic deficits yeah. sorry am I gonna have to repeat that yeah. sorry yeah. I started getting distracted anyway <laughs> that's like, Okay. So tell us about when patients come back from rehab at another location and they're into the community again. What sort of services are yeah. provided? Yeah. There are a lot of services that we provide and uh, we also look at the data in terms of how our patients are doing in terms of what are their long-standing neurologic deficits. Um, there's a stroke uh, survivors group that we have at, here at LRMC. And they, they actually meet here in the hospital. It's really nice for us to get feedback in terms of what was the patient's experience in terms of going through our stroke center. What are some of the things that we could do better? What are the, some of the needs that they have? And it's also for emotional support as well. In general, what happens is, is that these patients get they get a plan in terms of what their physical and neurologic and, and emotional needs are. Um, if they are doing very well, which the majority of our patients are, after they get acute stroke care here at LRMC, they go home and most of them go home without any significant neurologic deficits. Some of them go home with home health, where they have a nursing aide that helps them out at home. Um, and some of them um, do have significant deficits where they do have to, they have to go to a nursing facility for further care in terms of taking care of their daily needs. But one of the things that we really appreciate about the Stroke Survivors Group is that it gives us feedback in terms of how these patients are doing. A lot of them need emotional support. A lot of times the family members need emotional support for some of the patients that aren't doing as well. And it makes us feel better in terms of staff when we see the patients that are doing very well, that walk on in on their own and they drove to the Stroke Survivors meeting. And quite often some of those patients are the best patients for us to do talks when we go to somewhere else, say like at a nursing home and say, hey, listen, this is the importance of coming in early when you're having a stroke. This patient couldn't walk, couldn't talk. Now look at this patient right now. You could barely tell that there's something different about this patient. This wouldn't have happened if this patient didn't come early. So uh, I feel like the best examples of how things have changed with neurology and acute stroke care are actually the patients themselves. And so keeping connected with those patients is important. As you take a step back and look at the overall sweep of healthcare system these days, yeah. Their entire model is probably gonna change with healthcare in the future. In the past, what would happen is, is that people would come into a hospital, they would get a procedure or something done, and then they would leave, and there wasn't so much of a stickiness, uh, of a connectedness with that patient, with that facility. I really think that what's gonna happen in the future is, is that LRMC is gonna play a pivotal role for the care of the vast majority of all patients in this area. There's gonna be better outpatient follow-up there's gonna be a better sense of connectedness with the primary doctors in the field. Those are the foot soldiers for all these patients and exactly what happens in this hospital. 
In the past, sometimes you'd get a feeling that the right hand, which would be the primary care doctor and whatever was going on in the hospital with the hospitalist, sometimes they weren't completely in sync. And I actually really think that's gonna go away in the future. We're all gonna be part of one organ doing something for the patients to their benefit. And I think the Affordable Care Act is, is really kind of pushing some of those things where things are better integrated. And a lot of the emphasis is gonna be on trying to take care of patients so that they're doing so well that they don't have to come into the hospital. We're gonna get benchmarked a lot more now with a lot of data and it's forced us to look at a lot of the things that we're doing so we do it faster, better, and more efficiently for the patients. And one, some of the things that we're looking at is really if we're doing a great job for these patients, then they really shouldn't come back ever again with another stroke. Um, you know, and not only that, but some of the things that are not directly related to strokes, for example, say a patient's had a stroke, um, but they have a little bit of a swallowing difficulty. If that patient comes back in with a pneumonia because they swallowed some of their food incorrectly and they got a pneumonia from that, that's something where we didn't really position that patient to do really well and thrive as an outpatient. So what's happening now is that um, not only are we taking care of that patient from an acute stroke standpoint, but we're really trying to position that patient so that they do so well as an outpatient that they don't have to come back into the hospital with any acute stroke ever again. And not only do they have to come, never come back into this hospital with an acute stroke problem ever again, but they, they are set up so well for their needs that their disabilities are being very well met at home or in the nursing home or whatever their discharge is to. And I think the rehab center is going to really help with that because What's going to happen is there's going to be direct feedback. The neurologist that really takes care of that patient from an acute stroke standpoint can talk to the physical therapist and talk to the rehab people and say, hey, really, this patient's maybe a little bit borderline in terms of what their needs are. What do you really think really needs to happen for good follow-up with this patient? The goal is, is that when people are doing really well, when we are, as physicians are doing a really good job, patients come back to the hospital less frequently. Well, I think for one thing is that we, we certainly have to be up to the challenge. You say that. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. You so, know? so um, maybe you can say something to the fact that here at Lakeland we realize that we have to be. You know, so this okay. Is the term yeah. yeah, that's a better way. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, from from what you've seen in Lakeland since you've been here the last few years, what makes you think that we're sort of up to the challenge of taking on this venture when we have hospital? Here at Lakeland, we feel that we're up to the challenge. We have a lot of patients that have a lot of needs where they were gonna benefit significantly from having an integrated rehab system here. Um, so we've been planning for this for a long period of time. There's been a lot of thought into it. There's certainly been the need. We're really excited. We have great personnel here that's really excited to have this facility here. Um, um, it's really something that we're looking forward to. Tell me if I'm being wordy. No, no, you're quite succinct. <clears throat> what does the success of Lakeland mean to a successful outcome look like to right. a particular person with a particular stroke? Right. I think each patient is very different. Um, there are young patients that will come in and they've had a stroke, and essentially having almost zero deficit is key for that young person. You could be a musician. And any weakness of your dominant hand, your right hand, is just absolutely devastating because that's what you love to do. That is your job, that's your career, that's your passion. And so being as aggressive as possible is what's appropriate for that person. Um, uh, I think that we, we look at each patient as an individual and each patient's anatomy and their, their basic medical problem is different. Uh, I think that also in terms of their rehab goals, they're different. Uh, I think in terms of when you talk to patients about here's a procedure that we can offer you, it has more risks, but perhaps it has some greater rewards. And here's another option that has fewer risks and maybe, um, and maybe the outcomes may not be as robust. You'd be surprised at how different patients make different choices when they're fully educated about these different things. And so what I've actually found is that you really have to talk to each patient. You have to explain to them what their options are. 
and allow them to make the choice. There are some patients that you, they can't make that choice because they're having such a devastating stroke and you as the physician, you have to basically make that choice for them. Um, um, and it's kind of interesting just to see how it all plays out when you actually get them to wake up and communicate with you how they actually feel about what's happened and seeing them in rehab and seeing them as well in the stroke steering committee and the survivors group in terms of how they've done. Yeah, that's great. What are some of the type of patients that are coming in here? Are you seeing older patients? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What sort of patients do you see from yeah. young to old, different types of stroke? Right. So we look at the demographics all the time. Every year we present to the board what our numbers are really looking like. And it's uh, the numbers here are interesting. Um, it wouldn't catch many people as a surprise that a lot of our patients are older. Um, I think in general the median age is somewhere the average age is somewhere in the late, is the late 60s, early 70s for our patients. But there are lots of subgroups that are really interesting. Unfortunately, there are quite a few young people that are having strokes, and so that's something that we're very sensitive to. Um, there are patients who have a motor vehicle accident and they can tear a blood vessel called a dissection. 30 years old, 20 years old, 40 years old. Yeah, sorry. Okay, no, we wondered that was perfect. That was great. Do you want to repeat again? We just have camera going on in the back. Okay. Look at this. Go no, back to the younger, unfortunately, there's younger people. That was a great bite. So go back to that and then talk about who they are. What they're, what okay, so I'll scratch the board stuff because that was okay, noise wise. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Unfortunately, when we look at our patients, there's actually lots of different subgroups. And one of the subgroups that we see is that there are a lot of younger patients that come into LRMC with strokes. The reasons are, are numerous. Some young people, they have a blood clotting disorder. Um, some young people, they have a heart disorder. For example, they can have a, an abnormal heart valve. They can have a hole in their heart called a PFO or patent foramen ovale that needs to be closed. We have some patients that come in after trauma where they've had something like a dissection, which is a tear in the blood vessel and it causes them to have a stroke. Um, so at Lakeland, I think we've seen all sorts of different patients. Uh, um, we have patients that we've referred out to uh, other hospitals that require a specialized procedure like Stanford or, or Miami, for example, where they have a very rare disorder called Moya Moya disease. It's, um, um, we've had several cases of that here. And I think the more that we look at these patients and we do a better job accurately diagnosing them is the more we have to offer for lots of different patients. I think the characteristics of the providers would be similar to the goals that Elaine Thompson's laid out really for this hospital going forward in the future. I think that it would be a compassionate hospital system, the uh, providers would be compassionate. I think it would be more than just taking care of the patients currently, but really actually teaching others how to take care of patients like this so that there's a legacy in other generations of young physicians, young nurses, etc., that are good at taking care of these patients. Um, I'm not going to be around forever. Um, uh, uh, our nurses aren't going to be around forever. So it's important to have a nice steady pipeline for this community so that there's great healthcare providers now and for the future. And, and that's really what we're looking for. What's kind of, you know, with the safety net hospitals, so let's talk a little bit about the economics of people that are yeah. coming in here and why it's so important for us to have this community all Absolutely. Like only safety net Absolutely. It's really important because essentially LRMC is a safety net hospital. We're the, we're the last resort. Um, we, we see quite often a lot of chronic conditions that the patient is um, uh, unfortunately in a pretty dire situation um, quite often because they don't have great access to care. And we never turn down anyone here at LRMC. Everyone gets the same level of care, which is excellent care. It doesn't matter what your ability is to pay. It doesn't matter what hospital you've been to in the past. 
Uh, it doesn't matter who's taking care of you. We do the best that we can for every patient. There are patients that the reason why they're having strokes is simply because they, they don't feel that they have access to, to medications. We will simply call up the drug companies themselves um, and ask them to enroll the patient in an ability to pay program and get patients free medications quite often. Um, uh, um, as we get further connected as a healthcare network, follow-up is easier in the LRMC system um, with the Clark and Daughtry physicians and the clinic that we've built across the, from the emergency room. Uh, not just on an emergent basis, but to make sure those blood pressures are being taken care of, to make sure the blood work is actually progressing in a way that makes sense. What we're really trying to do is create a healthcare system where everyone has access to good care, no matter what their insurance is, no matter what their financial situation is, no matter who they are. And that our community needs that. Without that, patients are gonna die unnecessarily. Problems that you can actually fix at an early point can progress to something that's severe but we try to step in to really take good care of all these patients, both in the acute care situation in the hospital and to make sure that they have good follow-up to make sure that they don't come back in with something. That was one. Wow. Sorry, my pager went off. Give me one second. Um, some, can anyone have a Spectralink phone or? Uh, can I step out for one second? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's difficult, um, but we, we work with industry. The hospital makes huge commitments in can terms you, of... Can you start it? Yeah, sorry, let me start with the question. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry, you took me a long time to get Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just re-ask and I'll... Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, given your focus on excellent care for everybody and given the fact that some uh, people are able to afford it, how does a nonprofit rise to the challenge of such an enormous financial undertaking? LRMC as a nonprofit, we, we rise to the occasion of taking care of these patients by doing many different things. For one thing, every, we have a commitment that everyone that comes in this hospital is going to get great care. It doesn't matter what their funding situation is, we give them great care. If you need a procedure, we're going to do that procedure. If you need certain medicines in the hospital, we're going to do that. We even go beyond that. The hospital has made a huge commitment with making sure that people get acute care follow-up with clinics that are available for free. And this is a, uh, a tremendous investment that I'm not aware of any hospital in the area making. Um, it doesn't matter what your financial status is. There are certain conditions that you're gonna have where after you get discharged from a hospital, it's natural and expected that you're gonna need some follow-up and LRMC goes the mile, extra mile to make sure that you get that follow-up, to make sure that you get the medicines that you need. And certainly our emergency room, part of the reason why we see so many patients is because quite often, patients don't have a great primary care set up um, and they will need to come on back and our emergency room is wide open and if the patient needs to be readmitted, then they'll be readmitted. If they need to be seen just in the emergency room and, and some adjustments need to be made, then we make those adjustments via the emergency room without admitting that patient. So the reality is that healthcare in this county depends on LRMC. It really does. I mean, we essentially fill in the gaps and the cracks that exist between the private healthcare community and the patients that are indigent and don't have insurance or the people that are just underinsured. The people who have some form of insurance, but the reality is they just can't pay for something. Without LRMC, honestly, I really think people would die or people would have greater disability for things that are really treatable. And we step in to try to do the best that we can to nip all this in the bud. Are there community partners that you have that have stepped up to the plate financially to help with the, the cost of such a thing? Sure. Um, we've definitely reached out to all of our medical device providers and medication providers, drug company providers, so that they increase the exposure that they have to ability to pay programs for people who need medications for something more chronic. Um, we certainly work with cert all the free healthcare clinics in the area to try and work with them uh, in terms of getting good follow-up. Um, 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 we also definitely work with a lot of the healthcare providers that 
see some patients that are underinsured so that we try to make it as easy as possible for them. If they have questions at all in terms of what does this patient really need, they certainly can page me at any point as an outpatient. I'll get on the phone, look at the patient's images, hear the case and tell them, I really think this is the adjustment that needs to be made. Um, we interact with clinics, docs, institutions, USF, for example, where we refer quite often uh, some patients that have very tertiary and quaternary care issues that need to be seen by an academic hospital. We refer them over to there sometimes for certain procedures. We're a central glue, a central cog to make all this work. Talk about the, I just want to, I want to just follow up on yeah. that question about our corporate systems. We've got, yeah, yeah that's, that's a good group. Yeah, the current medical legislation and, and just so everybody fights for funding. Right. We have amazing corporate Citizens that, that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's true. Like Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's true. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you covered well. You went yeah. to underinsured. And that's right. Talk about the, the corporate like, sponsors that you have that are the part of the right. Lakeland system. Absolutely. I mean, Lakeland's a fantastic place. I, I've been to a lot of different communi communities on the East Coast, the West Coast, and I can tell you. Um, uh, uh, if you look at, for example, corporate entities like Publix that are really committed to Lakeland being as healthy and a wonderful place as possible, uh, their commitment makes a huge difference. Um, so uh, Lakeland is, as a hospital, as a healthcare community, really depends on interactions with people who donate their time, people who donate their money, people who donate their expertise even in terms of how to run something better as an organization. And it's really impressive when you see all these different entities, all these different individuals interact with these things. For example, the, the heart ball. The heart ball is a raging success every year where we, we talk about cardiovascular disease and stroke. And it's amazing how many companies donate things for free so that we can raffle them off and raise money for patients for stroke awareness or cardiovascular research. Every year we raise tens of thousands of dollars and the, the enthusiasm that we get from people is impressive. Uh, let me think about that one. It can be a lot of sense. <laughs> I would rephrase it from why do we need it to what will having this rehab center accomplish in this community? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. What will happen in one sentence? What will having this rehab center accomplish in this community? I think the patients with this rehab center in this community are gonna have better care, better continuity, and better outcomes. I really do. Okay. Uh, is there, <clears throat> as far as you, your young position, as you think about the future, and from what I'm gathering from this project, you guys are gonna be trying to do something unique, possibly trim setting for the whole country. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe you can just talk about what it means to you to be part of something that's right on the cutting edge right. and investigating what the future could look like with the patient. No more hanging. Don't ask me to ask that question again. Sure. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> now, so if you could just jump into that, that would be good. Oh, really? You just want me to go? Uh, or if you can rephrase it. I'm trying to rephrase it. it. Um, as you look at the future, mm -hmm. Lakeland Medical Center is, wants to be a fun center. Right. In the provision of health care, right. excellent care, right. meeting the needs of the community. What's it like to be a part of that? Yeah, it's really exciting. I can tell you when Elaine got here, her commitment to technology was a key aspect in terms of really pushing this hospital forward. And I've, I've never seen so many great, intelligent people being brought into an organization, so much rapid, profound change. And we're really on the cusp of starting to deliver all these things. I mean, we've gone to electronic medical records. We're very data centric. We know the things that we're doing well. We know the things that we can do better. And we always are pushing it to try and do better every single quarter, every single year. It's very patient driven in terms of the feedback that we get at the patients, but it's also data driven. 
And it's kind of nice to, to be a part of an organization like this. I've learned a lot from myself personally and I'm learning everything new again. Uh, we might want to repeat that one. Well, could, could you talk specifically about the, the rehab aspect? Sure. Oh, the rehab aspect of it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Or, your original thing was more organizationally, but... Yeah, um, I think I, I just didn't make myself clear. Okay. Karen, you kind of uh, that question. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I don't know if I'm just going to answer I think you need to say... I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of intensity and things like that. Yeah, yeah. The difference, we, we the difference is we get direct quality control. Okay. okay. And they get a full day. I mean, like there, they get like it's my understanding. Yeah. Some reasons we want it here. You go there and you get like a little spit in the morning. Right. And you just sit all day and, and lay in bed. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna try to not like directly not throw darts, day, but yeah. but. I can I can leave asking. Okay. Yeah. Evidence. Right. So you may have a patient all day long, every day, for a couple of weeks, and they get the next level of care. Right. Innovative treatment like that costs money. Right. It creates, and it needs people that are going to think big. Right. Uh, what sorts of things do you think will be accomplished here in thinking outside the box? Well, we're really excited to have a rehab center here for several reasons. One, patients are going to be able to get acute rehab faster by having the rehab center integrated in our healthcare system. And it's going to be patients of all types of means and needs. Um, essentially, by having it here, the minute that we feel that they're a good candidate for acute inpatient rehab, they will get acute inpatient rehab. There's no more of a need to wait for a, another facility to accept them in terms of transferring. And that's a huge difference. If you've had a stroke, you don't want to wait for your acute rehab. You want your acute rehab when you are ready for your acute rehab. And that's one of the things that we're going to be able to guarantee here by having it integrated in our healthcare system. The other thing is, is that we're going to have a lot better quality control. We know exactly what the patient looked like when they came in with their acute stroke. We know exactly what they need. And in terms of looking at the metrics, we're going to know exactly how much time they need, how, how much in terms of pushing them, what the expected outcomes are going to be, and we're going to just keep giving them the rehab they need until they hit those numbers. And we're going to have a much better feedback system where since they're in our healthcare system, I really think patients are going to be able to meet the goals that they have for themselves and the physician's goals as well. Excellent. Well, that's, that's, that's the video. That was great. Yeah.